So this weekend, Netflix released their reboot for the Spy Kids franchise, Spy Kids Armageddon, and where Robert Rodriguez, the original creator of the first Spy Kids movie, returns to direct another thrilling adventure. And I'm just gonna be upfront and honest with you guys, okay? I realize the Spy Kids movies are no longer made for my grown butt. But I was a kid once, young and full of life, and I obsessed over those first three Spy Kids movies. I remember begging my pop to take me to McDonald's because I desperately wanted to get the complete set of that Beetle from Spy Kids 2 on road trips to go to Ross or TJ Maxx for my mom for the millionth time. I'd be playing that Game Boy Advance Spy Kids 3D game. And who doesn't get an extra dose of motivation once they hear this poppin'? So although this review is definitely gonna turn into the grumpy old man complaining that this ain't my Spy Kids, this ain't what I remember, Spy Kids is still my birthright and I deserve the right to complain about it, even when I'm 80. I'm watching whatever Spy Kids you make. Okay, so look, I think it's kind of funny that Netflix wanted to make a reboot to Spy Kids. The backstory on how this movie was made is that Netflix was looking at their analytics, right? They have all this secret data they don't wanna share with the world and they realized Every time a Spy Kids movie is on our platform, views shoot through the roof. People are clicking on this movie and watching it. Same thing with like Shark Boy and Lava Girl, another Robert Rodriguez project. They were like, people watch this stuff. Let's let's make a continuation. And that led to We Can Be Heroes, resurrecting Lava Girl and whatever fake Shark Boy they had next to her. That's not Taylor Lautner. We need a sequel to put him back in the suit. So next up, Netflix said, hey, would you want to do another Spy Kids? Because Spy Kids Kids does numbers on our platform, my guy. Thus bringing to life Spy Kids Armageddon. Spoilers if you don't want to be spoiled for Spy Kids, but um, it's, it's on Netflix, man. Everybody got Netflix, right? I noticed this whenever I was watching the second trailer they released for this movie is that Spy Kids Armageddon was just going to turn out to be the first three Spy Kids movie all remade into one film and watching Spy Kids Armageddon, that's exactly what they did. I'm also pretty sure that this is a rebooted universe and where the previous films maybe don't exist. There is no reference or Easter eggs to any previous Spy Kids film. In fact, the kid division of the Spy Kids world is completely absent from this movie. That was like, you messing with the lore now, Robert Rodriguez? You George Lucas us, man. You, you ruined what we loved about this franchise. But I say that because the premise is basically the first Spy Kids movies with just elements of the other two thrown in there. We have the mom and dad played by Zachary Levi and Gina Rodriguez, who I'm sure are wonderful people in their own right, but they do not have the charisma and charm of the original parents from the first Spy Kids. That it was this anniversary we were finally going to tell our kids that we're spies. And I'm going to take the lead on that. Uh, no. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're trying to dance way out of this one. I would George and Ingrid Cortez were not only relationship goals, they were spy goals. There is virtually no chemistry between these two parents, but that's all right, because their whole role in this film is to get kidnapped. I am willing to make Zachary Levi an honorary Latin king, though. He's earned it. Antonio. This should be easy for you. Mira. I do want to make it clear though, as I'm going off on my exaggerated rant, none of my issues are really with the two main lead, the kids of the film. They were perfectly fine in their job. If anything, they were pretty adorable in their roles. Not going to say they're to the level of Junie and Carmen, but they do their best and I had no problem watching them along with the journey. But it was definitely the story surrounding them in what they're trying to do because here's where we start to get some of the elements of the other movies. Video games becomes a big part of Spy Kids Armageddon. That's right, they're Spy Kids. It's 3D and you with the nostalgia. One of the big issues they explore in the movie is technology and specifically video games and how that affects kids. Isn't that like a super relevant, non-cringy topic for a movie to dive into? You know better than to fry your brain with video games before school. So, if we ban all of their tech, maybe they should behave even better. So you think I'm an old man whining? Wait till someone says video game bad because violence. Then who's the cringy old man? Not me. But in the movie, there is a game maker named Ray Kingston, who's also referred to as The King. But everyone calls him by his gamer name, The King. You think you're the king? 
I'm the king! And in launch of his latest game, he gets a hold of this Armageddon key that is supposed to be able to hack into any system in the world, combines it with his video game. That way, if you want access to anything technological, you have to pass a level of the video game to be able to use it. So, you want to turn on your TV? Gotta play a level of high score. You want to use your Alexa, your iPhone, your Tesla? Gotta play a level of high score. Think of that insanity. We can't beat the game. That's denied. Now we're locked out of our home. Imagine having to win a Fortnite Victory Royale in order to start your car and get to work on time. That sounds like heaven to me, honestly. But it becomes meaningful to the boy kid in the movie, Tony, because he's always told video games are gonna get him nowhere, but since he's an expert of this game, he can easily win levels to be able to access all the technology. And then from there, it basically plays out the skeleton bones of the original Spy Kids, with like, the parents getting kidnapped, the kids going to this secret base hideout, they even do the whole long name joke thing. I don't use my full name, it's too long. Godman and Elizabeth Juanita Eco Brava Cortez. We we never use our full names. They're too long. Patricia, Angelita, Sorrow, Feliz, Ryan, and Tango Torres. That's where they hit a lot of the same story beats, you know, like the awesome technology that as kids blew our minds and we wanted so desperately. Microwave McDonald's, when is that happening, world? But maybe because tech has already gotten so advanced in our modern world, we're just like uncreative to what other cool things we'd want out there. Because none of the tech really shown off in here appeals to me and makes me go, oh, that'd be awesome to have. In fact, some of the gadgets in here are are just borderline so silly like they have a bomb that can control the emotions of a person and just take a look you two look hungry But once the kids go through their couple hour montage and earning their spy potential, the movie starts segueing into some Spy Kids 2 things, like a cute little android bot that you'd want as your sidekick. I'm gonna call you Bronson. Bronson will never be him. I'm just, you'll, you'll never be him, bud. In fact, I found myself saying a lot throughout this movie. I mean, at one point, the kids meet the director of the OSS, their boss, and this guy's no George Clooney. I've played a few video games in my day. You ever heard of Goldeneye? Watch this. They even throw in some like jungle-like pyramid structures and those skeleton villains from Spy Kids 2 in the movie. The one thing that does fascinate me about like Robert Rodriguez's kid films is like there's almost no point talking about the visuals and the graphics in here because he purposely makes them in a way where they're supposed to look bad or it's supposed to look heightened and off and they continue that same trend here but all in all before we get to the part of the movie where they start paying homage to spy kids 3d we get revealed the true motive of the king and why he's doing it it turns out way back the parents actually had a mission where they went after the father of the king and through excessive force as spies using violent gadgets explosions stealing some of his tech and coding they ruined the life of his dad sent him to prison where he died and he never got to spend time with him and like i want to remind you again the stakes of this movie because things don't seem that bad the bad guy here isn't really trying to like kill people or like even earn all the money in the world or ruin someone's life like he literally just wants you to have to play a game before you do any other activity deleting all new Clear launch codes, no need for that in my world. So that no one can nuke each other, the world has to be in harmony. I'm starting to think like, who are the actual bad guys in this movie? Leading us into the finale of the movie that is just a straight up Spy Kids 3D ripoff without all the fun Spy Kids 3D have. Like, Zachary Levi is basically in a reshaped suit of the guy, down to the life points on his chest. But you'll never guess how they come to defeating this evil threat and everything going on through love, compassion, and understanding. You have been such a great challenge for us. We really appreciate you. Keep up the good work. You're golden. So now we just have to inspire the world to be better. You know, instead of forcing everyone to be gamers like us. But when they put that plan into action, I couldn't help but to like roll my eyes and go, okay. It's a great message to send the kiddos, man. So I, I guess go for it. Look again, I'm fully aware the grumpy old man wagging my finger going, this ain't my spot kids. But I genuinely feel there is something fun you can make. Like comparing this to the first Spy Kids movie, there was charm, there was passion, there was good chemistry, there was intrigue and everything had a personality to it. You move on to the Spy Kids movies now made today, everything's a little 
little too polished, cheesy, corporate. It doesn't have that same charm. But I'm pretty sure kids today don't care about any of that. And they're probably having fun and they're enjoying it. In fact, if you saw this with a kid, I would love to know if they enjoyed this movie because I bet they probably did. But as someone who grew up with Spy Kids, my nostalgia and curiosity is always going to make me want to click. Let me know what you guys thought about Spy Kids Armageddon if you got around to seeing it. How do you feel about them just mishmashing the first three movies into one film? Anything, everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris.